Welcome to the Word Examined Podcast. I'm your host, Katie Wagner, intern pastor and true crime enthusiast. This season, we will continue to dive into the ultimate true crime story, the life, ministry, and death of Jesus Christ. This is a story you may have heard before, but I hope that with this telling, you can place yourself in the story and consider what it would have been like to shout Hosanna at the triumphal entry, share a meal at the Last Supper, or bear witness to one of the most brutal forms of murder in our history. I'm glad you're on this journey with me. Let's get started. Last time on the Word Examined podcast, we heard about Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem an entry that began with praise and adoration, but was clouded with conspiracy and plots against Jesus. We continue this week with what follows. This week we get a glimpse into the moments right before Jesus is arrested. Moments filled with companionship and hospitality, and simultaneously moments filled with deception and betrayal. Jesus had continued to teach, preach, and heal people in the temple and around the city. It was two days before the Passover festival, and the chief priests and scribes were gathering to discuss what to do with him. They gathered together in the palace of the high priest, a man named Caiaphas. They not only wanted Jesus out of their city, they wanted Jesus dead, and they were talking with one another about how to do so. They discussed whether or not they should kill Jesus during the Passover festival for fear of causing more chaos among the people in their city. They continued to plot. They continued to conspire. And they came to the conclusion that Jesus' death could not wait. So they put their plan into motion. In order for their plan to work, they needed someone on the inside. They needed someone who knew Jesus' movements, knew his plans. They needed to get one of Jesus' disciples on their side, to betray Jesus and lead Jesus into a trap. But how would they get one of them to turn on him? They were so devoted. Soon enough, they wouldn't have to wonder anymore. The devil was already at work in one of them, a man called Judas Iscariot who would shortly walk into their meeting and be the answer to their dilemma. Friends, I told you Satan would be back. Judas, one of the twelve disciples, a follower of Jesus, made his way to the place where the chief priests and the scribes were meeting. Judas had the intention to betray Jesus and found himself surrounded by people who not only wanted Jesus arrested, but dead. When they heard that Judas was willing to lead them to Jesus so they could arrest him and kill him, they were thrilled and offered him money in exchange for his betrayal. Judas would receive 30 pieces of silver for handing over Jesus to them. 30 pieces of silver would make Judas wealthy, but would come at a cost. What is that cost, you might ask? We'll find out next time, but for now, we'll let Judas relish in his newfound wealth. The day of Passover had arrived. People all over the city were preparing for the Passover meal, and Jesus was doing just the same, but he knew that this would be the most important meal for him and his disciples. Jesus sent Peter and John into the city to prepare the Passover meal for them. They asked him where he wanted to host the meal, because they had been traveling and didn't know where they would be able to prepare a meal and eat the meal together. Jesus told them that if they went into the city, they will find a man carrying a jar of water, and when they do, they must ask this man if he has a guest room where they can eat the Passover meal together. Jesus told them that this man will have a large upper room where they can share in this meal together, 
and that they should prepare the meal there. So they went, and they found all that Jesus had told them. They began their preparations. When the meal had been prepared, and when the time came for them all to sit down together and eat, Jesus took his place among his disciples and said to them, I have been looking forward to sharing this meal with you, because soon I will suffer. They all looked around at one another, not expecting Jesus to start off the meal this way. They waited with bated breath as to what he'd say next. They watched as Jesus picked up a loaf of bread and held it in front of them so they all could see. He began to speak, Take, eat, this is my body, do this in remembrance of me. They continued to stare. His body? What did he mean his body? Remember him? Where was he going? But they ate. They shared in the meal together as the bread was passed around. Then they watched as Jesus reached for the cup of wine, and as he slowly lifted it up, he spoke these words, This cup is poured out for you, the new covenant in my blood. Again, they stared at Jesus. His blood now? What did he mean, body and blood? Wasn't this bread and wine? But they drank. They shared the cup from one to another until it had made its way around the table. Judas began to squirm. He knew what he had promised to the chief priests and the scribes. But then he looked up at Jesus, his teacher, and remembered all that he had taught him. Despite being uncomfortable, Judas ate and drank what was given him. And Jesus, knowing that Judas would be the one to betray him, let Judas eat and drink with the rest of them. After the meal had ended, Jesus knew that this would be one of the last times they would all be together in the flesh, so he took the opportunity to teach them yet again. This time, a lesson that would guide their lives after he was gone. Jesus took off his outer robe and poured water into a basin that was nearby. The disciples watched him in anticipation, and what Jesus did next was shocking. Looking to be renewed daily in your faith? Check out Trinity Lutheran Church's daily devotions on the Trinity Facebook page. Each day, Pastor Brad or Pastoral Intern Katie posts a short video devotion of scripture, reflection, and prayer to strengthen you in faith for the day ahead. Search in Facebook for Trinity Lutheran Boyceville, like the page, and get renewed in your faith every day through daily devotions. As the disciples watched in anticipation, Jesus did something so unexpected they were left speechless. Jesus began to wash their feet. He knelt down in front of each one of them and washed their feet like a servant. This was what servants did, but Jesus was doing it. As Jesus made his way to each of them, he knelt in front of Simon Peter, who finally said something. Are you going to wash my feet, Lord? Jesus looked up at Simon Peter and replied, You won't understand now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Simon Peter pulled his feet away from Jesus. Then don't wash my feet. Jesus replied again, I have to wash your feet, or you will not share in what is coming. This goes for all of you. As Jesus turned to the rest of them, he said, not all of you are clean. At that moment, the lump in Judas's throat grew bigger as the time drew nearer for him to betray Jesus. Jesus continued washing Simon Peter's feet and the rest of the disciples. After Jesus had finished washing their feet, he put his outer robe back on and sat down with them again. He sat quietly and then spoke, Do you know what I have done for you? They sat quietly and waited for him to continue. I am your Lord and teacher, and I have washed your feet. Now you must wash one another's feet. This is an example I have set for you. Do as I have done to you. Servants are not greater than their masters. Serve one another. They now understood what Jesus had done. 
Jesus had shown them the love of God in a simple action, an action that had normally been held for those in the lowest of positions in society. Yet Jesus had done it to them. This was Jesus' gift to them that night, the night that everything would change. Jesus then continued speaking, and he looked troubled. One of you is going to betray me. The disciples looked around frantically at one another, with curious and condemning eyes, trying to figure out who it was. Simon Peter again broke the silence. Who is it? Jesus stood, took a piece of bread from the table, and said, It is the person that I give this piece of bread to. And with that, Jesus turned to Judas and handed him the bread. At that moment, the devil entered Judas once more. Jesus said, Do what you have to do. Judas leapt up from the table and ran out of the room, to the astonishment and dismay of the remaining disciples. They were shocked that any one of them could betray their teacher and Lord, let alone Judas. Acting as if nothing had happened, Jesus began to speak again. I am only going to be with you a little longer. Where I am going, you cannot come. But I give you a new commandment. Love one another, as I have loved you. This is how people will know that you are my disciples, if you love one another. Simon Peter, still greatly disturbed by the sudden revelation that Judas was going to betray Jesus, stood suddenly and asked urgently, Where are you going? Why can't I follow you? I would give my life for yours. Jesus said, Would you give your life for mine? Even you, Peter, even you will deny me three times, three times before the rooster crows in the morning. Peter was speechless. There was no way that he would deny being a disciple of Jesus. Jesus had to be wrong. Jesus comforted his disciples and led them out of this place and into a garden where they were going to pray. But this was no ordinary garden. This would be a place that would change their lives forever. Next week, on the Word Examined podcast, we will continue the story as Jesus is arrested and betrayed in the garden. Thanks for joining me. We'll see you next time. This episode is sponsored by Hakeem's Foot Washing Emporium. Been on the long, dusty road to Jericho? Feet so filthy your mother wouldn't love them? Come to Akeem's Foot Washing Emporium. Our trained expert foot washing slaves will scrub and pamper your feet so that they will shine like the sun. Also, we have everything you need to do your foot washing at home. Tubs, towels, scented soap, and more from all the top brands. Stop by Hakeem's Foot Washing Emporium today. We make your dirty feet clean. Thank you for listening. This podcast was written, recorded, and edited by Katie Wagner. The Word Examined Podcast. Available on Anchor Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, and Spotify.